In this lecture, we will discuss two programming models for NoSQL, MapReduce and Spark. Before we discuss these, let's first do a bit of recap of what we have covered in this course so far. In the first part of this course, we discussed single-node relational database systems, where the entire query is executed on a single machine end-to-end. -end. Then we talked about how to scale this up by running a single query across multiple machines. We discussed how we would change our query execution algorithms for different query operators under that setting. Then we discussed NoSQL databases, the different data models there, along with using MQL as an example query language running on a single machine. So now let's talk about running queries on NoSQL databases across multiple machines. Before we dive into the details, however, let's first do a quick review of the history of query processing. As we learned earlier in this course, there are three approaches to running relational queries across multiple machines. The first one is inter-query parallelism where we assign one query to each of the machines that we have. This is good for transactional or OLTP workloads because in those cases, we want to ensure that query latency is minimized. So having a dedicated machine per single query is one of the best ways to achieve that. The second type of parallelism is inter-operator parallelism. Here, instead of assigning one machine per query, we assign one query operator per machine. Query operator can be something like a join, an aggregate, a selection, etc. In contrast to inter-query parallelism, this is good for running analytical, also known as OLAP, queries. Recall that such queries tend to have complex query operators such as lots of joins and lots of aggregates. Here, having a machine assigned to an individual operator will help make sure that we produce tuples as fast as we can and not block the input of any of the downstream operators. Finally, in this course, we have been focusing mainly on intra-operator parallelism, where we assign multiple machines to a single query operator. In a sense, we are trying to get the best of both worlds by doing so. And this is also the most scalable mechanism as we can simply assign more or fewer machines for each of the nodes as we like. Unlike inter-query parallelism, where we need to worry about whether we have enough machines to serve each incoming query or in inter-operator parallelism, where we worry about whether we have enough machines to assign each of the operators in the query. In intra-operator parallelism, we don't have neither of those concerns. As a recap, let's also review two different joint algorithms that we have covered earlier for parallel relational databases. Suppose we have two relations, R and S with the keys underlined here shown in, on the slide. And we want to do a join of these two relations on their common attributes. In partitioned hash join, as you might remember, we initially assume that both relations are partitioned based on their keys. For instance, using a hash function to determine which machine to assign each of the tuples to. Then, in parallel hash join, we use a hash function to hash on the common attributes of both relations. In this case, B. And again, we use the hash function's output to determine which machine to shuffle the, tu the tuple to. After this shuffling is done, we will end up with tuples with the same value of B from R and S on the same machine. And once that happens, we simply ask 
each machine to compute their joins locally using any of our favorite single node join algorithms and we just combine all the outputs at the end. As an illustration, suppose we start with two partitions for each of R and S on M1 and M2, with the tuples shown here at the top of the slide. Since we are joining on the B attribute, we would shuffle on B by calling a hash function. And notice after the shuffling step, all tuples with B attributes equals to 20 would end up on machine number 1, and those with B attributes equals to 50 would end up on the partition on machine number 2. And once that happens, we just perform the local join on both machines, and we combine the results afterwards. Another parallel join algorithm that we learned earlier in the course is broadcast join. Here, suppose we have again two relations, R and S, and we want to do an equal join on B equals to C. Now, rather than shuffling the tuples from both relations, here we actually don't shuffle any of the R tuples sitting on their, part on their partitions. Instead, we send the entire relation S, or otherwise known as broadcasting it, to all the machines, and we ask each of those machines to do the join locally, just like before. Why would we want to do this? Suppose R is a huge relation as compared to S. So if we want to do a partitioned hash join, we might potentially be shuffling a lot of the R tuples among the machines. And that in itself can take up a lot of time. So if S is really tiny in comparison to R, we might as well just broadcast the entire S relation to each of the machines to save some network I.O. costs. Let's remember these two join algorithms and we will re revisit them later on once we talk about MapReduce and Spark.